Hi everyone, it's Pedro Mosseni here from Case Western Reserve University and for my CACCX talk today I will provide some insights for you uh, into brain sensing uh, ICs. Uh, so first I'll provide uh, in, uh, a brief introduction on um, on BMIs or brain machine interfaces. I will talk about um, you know, uh, 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 various types of signals that can be recorded uh, uh, from the brain as well as some requirements that are in place for recording these signals in particular focusing on intracortical action potentials or APs and finally I will just highlight some of the papers at this year's CACC conference and also some key references uh, for you to read. <clears throat> So, so uh, BMI devices are currently being pursued uh, to augment the quality of life in patients uh, who are suffering from paralysis, in particular due, uh, uh, due to spinal cord injuries or SCIs that are currently costing the healthcare system more than $40 billion annually. Uh, for these patients, given that uh, the communication channel from the brain down to the muscles is basically broken due to the damaged or injured spinal cord, uh, the overall goal is to basically to, uh, to record uh, brain activity and then use that information, use these signals in real time uh, to control the external environment and devices. Uh, for example, move um, a mouse cursor on a computer screen or move uh, basically a robotic arm in space as the patient is, uh, is, uh, is simply thinking about uh, these tasks, effectively bypassing the damaged or injured spinal cord. Board. Now, uh, depending on where your recording probe is located, uh, you know, you could be f uh, facing a wide range of different signal modalities that can be recorded uh, from the brain. At one end of the range, you have the surface uh, um, EEG signals uh, that can be directly recorded from the scalp, uh, basically a simple and fully non-invasive uh, mode of recording, uh, but in return, you're not going to have a very high degree of resolution in time and space. Uh, at the other end, uh, 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 uh. Uh, at the other end of the range, uh, you have intracortical action potentials uh, that can be recorded from individual um, uh, neurons if you penetrate the, uh, the, uh, the brain surface and basically go into the brain and depending on how close you can get to, uh, to active neurons. Uh, you know, obviously, this will be a highly invasive uh, mode of recording, but in return, you can basically have much higher frequency components uh, in your recorded signal, up to 10 kilo. Uh, for action potentials and also much higher amplitudes. Uh, the same type of electrodes uh, that are used for recording action potentials can also be used for recording local field potentials or LFPs that basically arise from an aggregate uh, activity of a large population of neurons and therefore as compared to action potentials will have frequent, uh, uh, lower frequency components but uh, can have higher uh, uh, higher amplitudes. Uh, now, uh, now most of today's uh, BMI devices and technologies aim to uh, record these intracortical action potentials, uh, basically these microvolt range weak AC signals and therefore there are some requirements in place for recording these signals as outlined here. You need to have a stable AC gain about 40 to 60 dB within your signal bandwidth uh, about 100 Hz to 10 kHz for extracellular action potentials. You have to have a robust mechanism for rejecting uh, DC levels at the input. These DC baseline levels can be uh, much higher and much larger in amplitude as compared to action potentials and also to kind of um, uh, you know uh, and they can also dr basically drift over time. Uh, so overall, you need to have a bandpass uh, frequency response for your uh, for your recording front end, and the high pass cutoff frequency of that band of that bandpass response uh, uh, has to be tunable in most applications, so that you can basically in real time you can separate action potentials from local field potentials. Uh, low power, obviously, the trend is currently less than 10 microwatts uh, per channel. Low noise, uh, 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 five microvolt RMS or less. 
less uh, within a large uh, bandwidth for 50 kilohertz for measurement. Uh, fully integrated design so that there are no use or need for any off-chip components and also obviously some level of A2D conversion per channel. Uh, typically less than 50 kilo samples per second for sampling frequency and 8 to 10 bits of resolution uh, per channel. Now currently the trend basically for brain sensing is um, is going toward high site density uh, brain sensing where you might want to, to simultaneously record uh, from hundreds if not thousands of channels. Uh, as such, you can, you know, as you can imagine, basically power and size uh, per recording channel can become critical issues in high site density recording. And given the higher frequency nature of action potentials, uh, your front end design will typically be limited um, basically to thermal noise and therefore naturally you will have a trade-off between power and noise performances. If you, be, if you burn more power in your design, you will basically be able to uh, bring the noise level down. A good rule of thumb is to burn uh, just enough power in your circuit uh, to, uh, to bring your circuit noise below the background noise level uh, of the recording site. Uh, you know that is typically about 10 microvolt RMS or so, largely depending on the area. Of the of the site. Uh, now here you see the uh, 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 here you see the a diagram for uh, for a uh, for a neural recording amplifier uh, for action potential recording that was published uh, uh, about 14 years ago in 2003 issue of GSSC. Uh, you know this has been proven basically a very popular building block for these applications over the past uh, 14 years or so. It has a simple architecture as you can see here based basically on an AC couple. Uh, uh, amplifier, therefore it naturally uh, rejects the DC uh, baseline levels at the V in and V ref inputs. Uh, the gain is um, set capacitively by the ratio uh, of C1 uh, over, uh, over C2. Uh, and then for, uh, for DC baseline stabilization, this design employs uh, two mass bipolar elements uh, that under low voltages exhibit a very high value of resistance up to, up, to even a, you know, up to even a giga ohm or so and therefore in conjunction with the feedback capacitor C2 uh, they basically create an ultra low uh, high pass uh, cutoff frequency for the band pass uh, uh, for the band pass response. Uh, now in this case as you can, as you can see the gate uh, of the uh, uh, for, for, for both MA and MB transistors the gate is, uh, is connected directly to the drain so that uh, high pass cutoff frequency is not tunable uh, for, this you know, for this design but it is possible to apply a control voltage basically directly to the, ga uh, to the gate of these two transistors in order to tune uh, basically that, um, that cutoff frequency. Uh, here you see a recording of an extracellular action potential uh, from rat cortex uh, that has been basically recorded by this uh, Amplifier again, as you can see, a very a weak, about 50 microvolt peak-to-peak uh, -peak, uh, action potential. That 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 basically be, that that basically uh, looks like a spike. Now, uh, as I said, over the past 14 years or so, uh, these devices, these designs have come a long, uh, have, uh, have come a long way with the current trend focused upon a high site density brain recording. Here you see an example of the work by the group at IMEC uh, in Belgium that will be published later this year in, 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 in T Biocast. This is a so-called active electrode um, fabricated monolithically in point, uh, 0.13 micro. SOI CMOS. As shown here in the, in the upper uh, left corner, the shank uh, basically of this device is 70 microns wide, uh, 10 millimeters uh, in length, and contains uh, up to about a thousand recording sites. Uh, underneath each recording site in each pixel, uh, basically, we also have in this case. Um, uh, voltage buffers uh, to provide a low output impedance and therefore low levels of crosstalk uh, basically among these uh, tightly packed uh, recording sites. Um, uh, uh, the probe is called an active probe because as you can see all the interface electronics and readout and conditioning circuitry has been packed onto the base uh, of the probe that is uh, fabricated monolithically with the shank. Um, uh, so for in this case up to about uh, up to 380 
84 uh, recording channels are placed uh, uh, on the on the back end of the probe, five millimeters by nine millimeters in area. Uh, 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 all the recording channels are reconfigurable for recording both action potentials and local field potentials. Uh, we also have multiplexing going on in the back end uh, in order to basically reduce the number of signal lines coming out of the probe, a 10 bits or ADC uh, for A to D conversion, and ultimately a very high data rate, 172 megabit per second interface uh, in order to uh, transfer the, basically uh, all the data from the probe uh, to the outside world. Uh, now in this year's CICC conference, we have uh, actually covered uh, basically a wide range of, um, of, of, of applications for, uh, for, uh, for biomedical devices uh, ranging from uh, wireless uh, power delivery to millimeter sized implants that was covered in paper 8.1 in the biomedical uh, system session. Now also by potential recording, in this case actually focusing more on physiological signals such as the PPG and the ECG signals in papers 8.2, 8.3, and 8.5 and we ended the session uh, by talking about a very high site density uh, multimodal uh, CMOS as a CMOS sensing array with single cell resolution uh, for cellular uh, sensing. And here uh, at the end, I just uh, basically uh, list for you, um, in, in, you know, some key additional references over the past 14 years uh, that would be uh, good uh, choices for reading. Thank you very much for your attention.